Hello everyone. This is Rushil Rungta once again. I am a secondary 1 student of Raffles Institution Singapore. And in my quest for learning, here I am with new episodes of Leadership Simplified. In conversation with people who do things differently and inspire others to do the same. My guest for today is Mr. Samson O. Mr. Samson is a self-made e-sports and gaming entrepreneur. He is the founder of e-sports news portal Gosu Gamers, e-sports talent agency Team Flash, and the gaming incubator Cargo Studio. Welcome, Mr. Samson. Thank you for having me, Mr. No problem. It's my pleasure. So uh, I'm actually really excited to have you as my guest today, and uh, really want to know more about what you do. And uh, yeah, so let's get on with the questions. I often hear stories about difficult situations and failures in the early stages of life, playing a major role in achieving success in the later years. Would you agree with this? And if you do. My follow-up question would be that are people who have faced less hardships or failures less likely to succeed in life? I totally agree with you. It's part of comes to failures, it will evoke a lot of memories, and all the memories or experiences helps me me who am I today. Um, and that those failures or experiences adds to my gut. And when you go through that phase, when you discover about yourself, I think very important you know about yourself what is your strength and what is your weakness, and you help you to make better decisions, right? Yeah. And I will always remember I had a few failures, and I think there are a few experiences. For example, one I lost a lot of people. I always remember when I have to like face them face to face and tell them, "You need to close down, and you are losing jobs, mm. not just to one. You are talking to a hundred people. Mm. I think you have no choice but to grow up. And also, when you have to go back to the stakeholders and say that we lost money, we need to close it down." And that I lost a lot of money, and those are painful experiences. Mm-hmm. I but I take it as failure. Either you win or you learn. Mm-hmm. And when you say learn means you fail, so I always equated failure to learning. Mm. And let me close it off. I think you have the two parts to your questions. I wouldn't say.、Um, Hardship and failure. If you don't have that,、um, you will less likely succeed in life. I always believe life is all a matter of risk,、um, a ratio of risk versus reward.、Mm-mm. And the more good things you do, I guess when you fail a lot, you make better decisions.、Mm. You dare to take risks, and you are comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you do these kind of things, what happens to you, Ray? Is、um, it makes you a better person. When you are a better person, what it means to your life or to my life? Let's talk about my life. Is I just see that the reward percentage, reward over risk percentage, the reward just jumps up, right? But if you don't fail, you have a higher percentage of of. That reward the world risk that risk part that percentage goes up. When it goes up,、um, you still have a chance of falling over to that reward part, but just that it's lower. So to me, a game of life is a game of reward the world risk. It's just as simple as that. Rosie, there's no hard and fast rule. But but my 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 conclusion is, you always wants to do things that stack the reward. Mm-hmm. Attention! The reward on your life, so that you study hard for a reason. You study hard so that you have more things on that reward column, right?、Mm-hmm. And so the chance of succeeding is higher.、Mm-hmm. Right? But again, 
success comes in many definitions. I'm not doing, going to go there because your question is about failure, not so much of success, right? I hope I answer your question, but this is my definition of failure, yeah? Mm. Actually, what you're saying about, uh, you know, learning from failure and, you know, trying to do better in the future is, in fact, an aspect of my school's crest. The Raffles Institution school crest has a twin-headed eagle looking in two different directions for inspiration. And one head draws strength and insight from the lessons of the past, like failure and, you know, uh, setbacks, while the other looks ahead to the rich potential in the future, which you said, you know, learning from failure and then doing better next time. But uh, I completely agree that success comes in different definitions and not necessarily failure is the only part to success. Yeah. So, my next question is, what sparked an interest in esports and gaming? And when or what made you decide to start a company focused on that area? Um, actually, it's, 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 it's sort of... I didn't plan for this. Oh. And I never planned for that. Oh, I'm going to be... You know, when you are young, you people ask you what you want to do, right? It's always, I want to become engineers. I want to become developers. I want to do this and do that. But I always remember many years ago, I went to my sister's house and I'm quite close to my nephews. But one day, I, I, I got an aha. It's, I saw all my nephews were playing games together with my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law back then was um, 40 over years old and he was playing Dota 2. Right? Mm -hmm. And the TV was switched off. And after that, I went out to take a shower. When I came down, I saw them stop playing games, but they were watching Twitch, looking at other people playing games and talks about games, and even lifestyle programs of the gamers. Mm. And the TV was switched off. From then on, I saw a great deal of patterns. And I always believe in looking at patterns, patterns of the next generation patterns of problems. Um, everything is about patterns. Right? When I saw the patterns, I knew the entertainment sector has changed. And I knew game is a very important part. Game, game has played a huge part in my life. When I was 10 years old, I went out to work, I sell games, I talk about games. And I did it for free during the floppy days. I think way beyond your years. Your dad would know. Um, I started from there. So it's always in me. So when I saw that, I tell myself, maybe this is something that I need to do. Mm. And that's how I started. So I planted the seed in my head. And, and from then on, things just pops out. So whenever when you plant something in your head, the universe will find a way to open up your brain so that your brain will be able to see those things. I think that's how it started. And because of that, I started Flash. And I get people coming to me, asking me, Samson, how can you help me? I want to make money in gaming or in sports, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how I started actually. And, and after that, I start to grow into various areas because I felt the conviction to support and try to turn this industry into a proper mainstream industry. And back then, when you start game company, people will say that, how can you have gamers, right? You don't make money with games. Or parents will say no to you and all kinds of negative stuff. But despite that, I'm very convicted and convinced that I have such a huge, uh, 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 100% conviction that this will work out and mm -hmm. that's how I pushed on and started putting money every dollar I make I just put it back wow. and just continue to push and here am I sitting here telling you the stories and a lot of people ask me the same questions those people who said that games don't make money came back to me and gave us money and I guess 
that's the path. And of course, along the journey, I saw too many, too many kids. They are all creative and gifted kids, but they don't get good results. Yeah. And I decided, let's do something about it. We have a lot of young people in our setup. I gave them a job without looking at results. And they are a very, very good employee of my team. They mm. create great stuff. And mm. This is the reason and this is what sparked my interest in the mm. of this whole industry. Mm. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Actually, you uh, expanded much more and kind of gave a brief answer to a few of my uh, next questions. But uh, I, I mean, like, I have to admit that uh, just like most other children, even I like uh, gaming quite a bit. And it's nice to know uh, that, you know, gaming sometimes, if you just look at it from a different point of view, it can really be shaped into a career, a money making business. So it's really nice to hear that. Yeah. Now, um, actually, in the previous answer, you had mentioned something about educational background so my next question is along is on the same lines so i had read that in an interview with the peak magazine you mentioned that my team does not look at the applicant's psle scores or educational background but his passion and hunger to create something and i took my psle last year so i know exactly what goes through the minds of children sitting for psle and you know most of us feel it's a big deal so what is your advice to school going children of my age group who are about to sit for these big exams um i guess exams is part of your life right That's whether it's PSLE, I think the magazine, the PSLE word is just a context. And to me, the context is we shouldn't be shaped by what is the number or the outcome of what you went through on a piece of paper. Mm. Right? And that results will stick to your t-shirt that you wear forever. And I always tell my HR, never judge a person by the t-shirt that he wears. Mm -hmm. and that equated to results a bad result at the age cannot be defined by one biggest milestone when you are at the age of 12 and I hated that and if everyone do that based on what school you go to or the result again you going, you get good results and going to all this path you will have reward a higher percentage of succeeding right which is great because we want to make sure that we always stack on that part of the reward part so that when you go out to work when you when you when you discover yourself you will always have a higher probability of winning that game of life mm. right but i also want to take care of the people that is on the other side mm. right the whole system the education system is from 1970s until now, or even 60s, the only changes in the education system is that now we are using Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay? The teachers, even from in my son's school, they don't know how to use Zoom. <laughs> and, and you are trying to engage a bunch of students, a bunch of people who are trying to learn in the day and age of Google and YouTube, and if we don't do the right thing and change the landscape of the whole education system and still define everyone based on the results of a PSLE or any results, I think we miss out a great chance of helping the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. Okay? And me personally, I hated that, Russ. And I don't mind sharing to you a personal story of my son. My son is in the ASD, ASD means autistic spectrum disorder. I went to North Flight, I saw hundreds of kids. A lot of people don't give them hope. Yeah. But they're all great students, right? Mm -hmm. And But they are being defined by bad results in North Flight, Half Flight. Just mm -hmm. because they are not normal. 
in their world they are normal, right?、Mm. So to me, it's all about helping them to identify their strength.、Mm. And I hired, I tell all my HR. I have so many companies. I have about two hundred old people collectively in my setup.、Mm. I spend so much time telling my HR remove the qualification of hiring people by looking at the results.、Mm-hmm. Judge them based on what they can do. Judge them based on how hungry they are, how passionate they are.、Mm. Don't judge them based on the results.、Mm-hmm. And when I started doing that, or when we started doing that. We realize the world has a lot of talented kids,、mm. and I always tell everyone it's all about self discovery.、Mm-hmm. It's really about just like you. I ask you back now. You interview me. I interview you. What is the biggest takeaway when you're at this age, thirteen years old, trying to do a YouTube interviewing an uncle sitting here? And had me telling you all these stories, right? You learn skills of how to set up YouTube.、Mm. You learn the skill of creating content.、Mm-hmm. You learn the skill of drafting questions.、Mm. You learn the skill of self-confidence, asking those questions.、Mm. You learn the skill of engagement.、Mm. You learn the skills of my failure. Right, asking the right question. You learn how to bounce the ball back and forth. Those skills the school don't teach you. Yeah. Right. So it's all about self discovery and stacking probability in that drawer called a reward. Right. Instead of the other part, and and that's all. So coming back to you, I know I answered a lot of stuff here, but the most important thing is really about self discovery,、mm. and always focus on the strength. Okay, identify your strength. Don't 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 worry about bad results or what. Just give your best. I think that's that's all we can ask for.、Mm. That was very inspiring, Mr. Samson. And I think、uh, it's very true that you know one an individual must know his strengths and weaknesses, and should not let people like sway him away from doing what he wants to, and. You know,、uh, you remind me of what my mother told me before my exam that you know, bad results, good results don't really define your future. And so that was, and because of that, I was generally calm and composed and managed to do well for the exam. But that's not really the point. The point is that you should have the mindset that you know, bad results or good results or results in general don't really、uh, define your future. It helps. It helps. If you get good results, it totally help what you want to do. But that doesn't mean that you don't have the opportunity to succeed just because you fail at the age of twelve, right? And 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 the point is really about it's part of the process of learning.、Right? Mm.